going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vile Files Ask Nick Edition. And it's a special edition because Justin Long is with us. And uh, for all the people who listen to Ask Nick, I know you are gleaming with excitement for Justin. Uh, he was our 200th uh, episode guest in an interview. He quickly did a recap and an Ask Nick episode. And many people would say he shined. I know a lot of you like it when I just do the Ask Nick myself. We like to bring some of our favorite guests back. Uh, but I don't know if anyone complained about No, Justin. because I pulled up that episode because I was making our 400th episode little compilation. And every comment on YouTube was, what a great duo. Bring him back. Make him a permanent guest. Bestie of show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a bestie of show. Anyway, he is with us. He did not disappoint. Uh, so we will uh, get to Justin. We have a great week for you lined up. We have more Bachelor gossip hot topic. I don't know what the fuck. You Reality TV is a whole potentially. <laughs> yeah. Tune in tomorrow for all your latest pop culture Bachelor gossip. Who is fucking up with their social media? I don't know. We're going to talk some shit. We'll talk some shit. I'll tell you that much. Uh, that's tomorrow. And Cindy Eckhart is our guest on Wednesday. Do you know who Cindy Eckhart is? I don't know. Maybe you might. But she is a billionaire who invented the female version of Viagra. Incredible. And then she has an incredible story around it. So, like, what is... Is there... Uh, is there a... There's a female Viagra? Uh, are you someone or a woman who might be interested in, in, in getting a better sex drive? What does that mean? And where can you find it? And why can't you find it? So many burning questions. We'll talk with her. I... I I am so excited about that episode. I, I think it's going to be, from what I understand, a very fascinating, successful person, self-made billionaire, trying to advocate for you women and uh, your horniness. I Thank guess. you. A champion of horny women. <laughs> women supporting women. I, I think there's just a lot there to peel back, and I can't wait to talk to her about that. So be sure to check out uh, next week, uh, this Wednesday's Going Deeper with her. Don't forget to send in your questions at asknick at castmedia.com, cats with a K, for your questions for Ask Nick and our mediation calls and our Going Deeper episodes. If you have a loved one or a friend uh, that you're having any type of tiff from, a disagreement, you're having a hard time getting over, we'd love the opportunity to mediate that fight. Every single person who's called in for a mediation has been happy. They've done it, including the men. This is not the vile trial. This is a mediation for everyone to get back on the same page. We don't pick sides. We just try to find a common ground. So send in those submissions. We need them uh, for the show. Uh, also, again, you got, you're going to hear me talk about it. My book, uh, Don't Text Your Ex Happy Birthday, is available for pre-order out in October. Uh, I promise you, if you like this uh, Ask Nick edition of The Vile Files, you will love this book. I really mean it. It won't be a waste of your money. I truly believe that it is a, a, it's a nice little manual for helping you feel more empowered and successful in your dating life. Uh, you can pre-order it now. Uh, the link to do that is in the show description, or you can, I'm sure, find it on my social. It's a link in bio on my Instagram. Uh, it means the world to me that you guys have uh, supported this show. Uh, truly. And uh, again, I, I truly believe that if you found any nuggets from this show, you will find many more in this book. And it's a fun read. It's perfect for any friend that you have who's going through it. I do know that there's only, in terms of the pre-orders available, there's only half. Well, I don't know how that works, but in terms of what they're making out of the gate, it's about half of our ASNIC audience. So get it well taught because who knows, maybe we'll sell out. Thank you in advance. Let's get to uh, Justin and our callers. Question time with Nick. Let's ask Nick your sexy questions. Justin, are you, are you ready to do these calls? Let's do it. We're I'm excited. We're very excited. My I audience was, is very excited. Well, it's, I'm, it's my first time out of the house. And last time, last the first time we did this together, we were too single bachelors yes and now we're very much in love so very... now we're really ready <laughs> that's true i finally feel like i have a little bit of authority yeah well, it was always there i do feel like he i kept saying that too it'd be like take it with a grain of yeah. salt and we're talking to two single four how old are you four, 41 41 yeah, yeah 40 <laughs> single middle-aged guys yeah. just being like giving you're relationship dating wrong. Advice. Yes. well i always like to say Success and love in relationships is not about having someone. It's about having the right one. Uh, uh, and so while well we were said. single then, we had been through it. Totally. And I had gotten to a place, I had anyway, where I comfortably was, comf well. I was comfortable with, with myself. Yeah. I was ready to be, I didn't know it at the time, but I was ready for the one. And the one uh, I met, I found. 
and you seem very happy. I, I, we don't have to like get into it. No, I but it. I am. It's I'm, I. It's weird. It's I want to, and but I also want to be protected. Sure, you know, I, I want to scream it from the rooftops, but I also want to be um, protected, sacred. To I you. totally relate to that. Yeah. It's like I don't yeah. know. It's like let's just yeah. In the this day and age, of, yes. yes, don't have to share everything with everyone. But, but we um, are happy. You are happy. I'm so happy. Well, yeah. let's get to our callers. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. How's it going? It's going well. What's your name? I am Andy, and I am 30 years old. <laughs> All right, Andy, how can we help? One of my sisters, she is 29, and she just started her, well, she was 28 at the time, but she got into her first um, relationship of her life in January of 2020. And she got into this relationship, and she called my me and my other sister, because we're really close. We talk um, every day. And she was telling us about this guy, and then she told us that... He is technically married with two kids. Oof. And we're like, okay. And we're like, is he planning on getting divorced? And she's like, well, he's separated. And we're like, okay, we'll just tread lightly. And she didn't tread lightly. <laughs> she he tread lives firmly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she did. He lives across um, the country. And they talked and they ended up getting together. And they, I think they met for the first time in, like, in person in March. And then they got together again in April. May and then they did a family trip with with her, her boyfriend, their two his two kids, his ex wife, her boyfriend, and his kids Whoa. in well, June. I mean, that's the good <laughs> news is she did confirm that he is in fact separated yeah. because there's often the yeah. uh yeah, I'm separated, separated, and then right. you find out they're not separated at all. You couldn't do a trip like that if you they were still if he was still if if there was some shady it. dealings. I mean, you could, I guess. You could. You'd you have could. to be really, <laughs> really <laughs> elusive. I'd be bold. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know. So, but, so I, they went on this big family yeah. trip. But we, I told her, I was like, because I was with, I was watching one of your Ask Nick episodes on Instagram or reading it, and um, it said that if you're separated, don't have your relationship progress faster than the divorce is progressing. So I was like, just don't progress your relationship faster than his divorce is progressing. So we would ask her like, hey, how's that going? She's like, he's still not divorced. And we're like, well, when's that going to happen? And he just never was on the, in the plans, I guess, or not at that moment. But she ended up moving across the country. So she had like no clarity because like, uh, I mean, I don't know a ton about divorce and I know things can take time, but Usually yeah. there's like a, if you asked for an update, if, if divorce proceedings were moving along, they could give up someone an update. So it's like, well, mm-hmm. here are the next steps, you know, the lawyers, yeah. whatever. It's like yeah. three months out, but things are moving forward. You're giving me the impression that there's, they're just separated with no actual, actual like, thought, like effort in terms of getting divorced. This is like, they've just decided we're just going to get separated. Maybe it's because of money or finances, whatever the reasons, but they've yeah. decided to just go about it this way. Well, he just kept telling us that she's taking care of it. And, but that wasn't the whole case. Like apparently, so my mom, we were, I mean, sorry, there's like so many different moving parts to this story. We were going on a trip to Mexico for my mom's 60th birthday. And my mom let her know that he is not invited unless he's divorced. And he said, I'm going whether you like it or not. Whoa. She can choose to be with me or she can choose to be with you. And we're like, well, you're not invited. Like that kind That's of, wild. we grew up in a really religious household. So it's like, if you're not divorced, you're technically married in the, the eyes of God or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, one of my other sisters thought the same thing, but we're just kind of like, well, if you separated, they both know about it. That's up to them. But it's my mom's trip. Yeah. She's paying for us. It's her birthday trip. It, be respectful. If you're not invited, yeah. don't come. Mom's paying for it. She's yeah. on the bill. It's her, her, her 60th. Where are you going? Yeah. We went to Puerto Vallarta. Oh, okay. Lovely. Lovely and, beaches. And he, was, and he was just like, I'm going. She can choose me or you. And, but then turns out he was wait, divorced. Wait, wait. She said, your, your sister said, I'm going. She can choose me. No, no, no. The, no, the guy the said that. The boyfriend. The boyfriend said, I'm going whether you like it or not. The, she can the choose currently to, married to spend boyfriend. time with me or she can spend that's time with, crazy with your family. That's 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 all you right? kind of need He's to know. like, I'm showing up to your mom's trip. <laughs> that's why. <wild>. Yeah, <laughs> and she can choose who she hangs out with. Is he a professional wrestler? <laughs> what a, that? What a wild thing to do. I hate this right? guy. Right? like I thought. We thought that was very disrespectful. But then yes. on top of that, apparently he was divorced, and he was just trying to see how we would if we would change how we reacted around him. So he was trying to manipulate us and like try oh, to man. figure out if we didn't like him because he was what? married, or if we didn't like him for other reasons. How did you find that out? Who did you hear that from? 
my mom kept pestering her, like, is he divorced? Is he divorced? Is he divorced? And she's like, well, finally, she's like, it's not my business to say, but he is divorced. He didn't want anyone to know. He wanted to see if you guys treated him differently. Huh. If he was divorced. Do you believe her? Because I... Not necessarily, like, I was like, show me the divorce record. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> like, I don't I believe it. it. I feel like mom and the family set this boundary in their opinion about being divorced. So he uh-huh. either he said to your sister or your... I, I, from a guy who you know, said I'm going to show up sounds like the type of guy who's like, you know what? Fuck it. I am divorced. You know, also a guy who's, yeah. who's that petty, who goes to the mat yeah. over something like that is if he does get divorced, because it's a major thing. It's a yeah. major thing to go through. And he's going to talk about it and use it to his benefit. He's going to like advertise it. He's not going to keep that information hidden from yes. someone that he's with. And even if it were true, that, that would it's all... a crazy ultimatum. It's a crazy mind, <laughs> like manipulative thing to do. Well, I, I actually think, oh, weirdly up, enough, <laughs> saying that he made up the fact that he's divorced now and is lying is yeah. the better version. You think? Well, because if it's true that he made it up to test you, then that pe- that opens up a whole Oh, door. you're saying that's the worst option. Yes. Yes, yes, I agree. Yeah. I think he's lying and not testing. <laughs> I because uh-huh. testing it's you the lesser would, of two evils. It's a, yeah. <laughs> I, that's actually him lying is the better version. It's true. <laughs> of him of like two, right? literally deciding that like he's so Machiavellian, or maybe not Machiavellian, but there's petty. You're giving him too much credit. Yeah, or just Machiavelli like, got yeah. thick shit done. Yeah, <laughs> he's but, petty and insecure, and yeah, and doesn't know how to just be upfront and honest. Because if he is also testing you, then he's still lying. He lied already. Mm-hmm. Now he's, and now it's just like, how do you deal with that? Article has launched a new line of outdoor products for summer 2022. Think oversized statement loungers, streamlined dining pieces, and easy to style sofas for all your backyard needs. With 42 pieces plus a selection of best sellers from past seasons, Article has what you need to outfit the deck of your dreams this summer. Listen, Article makes amazing furniture. So whether it's their new outdoor line, you have indoor needs, bedroom sets, dining rooms, Article has an array of wonderful curated and boutique furniture that has a bit of a Scandinavian, bohemian, industrial kind of design to it. And it's super affordable because they cut out the middleman. No showrooms, no crap like that. Fast affordable shipping is available uh, in the U.S. and Canada, and is free in orders of $999 or more. All in-stock items are delivered in two weeks or less, and if for some reason you don't like what you picked out, they make the return and exchange super user-friendly. Uh, you won't want to shop with anyone else after you shop with Article. Article is offering our listeners $50 off their first purchase of $100 or more. To claim, visit article.com slash V-I-A-L-L, and the discount will be automatically applied at checkout. That's article.com slash V-I-A-L-L to get $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. Canva! Canva Pro is a design platform that empowers you to create and share stunning content in just a few clicks. And it's also something that apparently this podcast runs on because after uh, our Canva subscription ran out, Allie and Amanda panicked. And, Literally, uh, <laughs> we were like, can we please renew? Can we please renew Canva? Turns like, out they're not talented. It's just Canva Pro. <laughs> how rude. I think there is some skill in picking from the many, many, many cool designs that Canva has. That is takes a lot of creativity. But that's a good point that like you, anybody can look like they're making professional quality designs with Canva because it makes it so easy. They have everything from like build it from the ground up, create your own thing. And they have these awesome templates. You can use it for invitations. You can use it for flyers. You can use it for your own social posts. It's better to work so much smarter than harder. And uh, that's what Canva helps you do. It helps your team do, whether you are just a, a creative individual wanting to be the best of the best. It's perfect for you. Also, if you have a small team uh, like we have, plus for you and four teammates, you can unlock everything Canva Pro has to offer for just $12.99 a month. So if you're trying to make amazing content that makes you seem like you went to school for years and spent tons of money doing it, well, you don't have to do that. You just get Canva Pro. Design like a pro with Canva Pro right now. You can get a free 45-day extended trial when you use my promo code, V-I-A-L-L. Just go to canvapro.me slash V-I-A-L-L to get your 45-day extended trial. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash V-I-A-L-L. Canva.me slash V-I-A-L-L. 
Andy, where are you at with it now? Um, and 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 I'm also curious. What are, are, does this guy have any like qualities that you enjoy that you that you like? And we okay. Well, when we first started talking to him and getting to know him, he's very personable and he's very like relate. Like he likes to he's like ask you questions and get to know you. And he was very like charming. Yes. Uh -huh. But then okay, so I have four sisters, and one of them is like kind of more it's like black women. and white and like religious about things. So she was very open about like how she does not want to get to know him or like be around in this relationship until he's divorced. Like she was very open about it and kind of like, I don't respect this relationship. I don't, but she would still come around. Like if he came, like he came and visited us and she would come and be with the family. But then one night it was in June, apparently the sister who's in this relationship with this boyfriend, she, um, she felt like she was being ignored and ostracized from this one sister. None, none of us, I did not feel that way. I did not pick up on that, but she felt very ostracized. So he sent an email to my mom recently, and this is in the email. Okay. <laughs> and so he said it wasn't until June 21st during a family dinner when my partner received the same treatment I had received from my sister and her and her husband. Why no one else stood up for her while she was being ignored and judged is beyond me. She called me in tears at night telling me how hurt she was. So now I'm stuck thousands of miles away from my girlfriend getting bullied, bullied by her own sister and brother-in-law. It was the last straw and, it took, and I took it into my own hands. So what he took into his own hands is he wrote what he called a puddle, apparently, which he will explain in this email, but a puddle. puddle. And it is... It's like a poem? So, <laughs> like a uh, limerick? My sister, my sister was doing um, one second a day video. So it's like you take a, a picture one second of every day for the 365 days. And so she posted this on New Year's. My sister that was not getting along with her at the time saw her name involved in it. And it is... Um, it had her name, so it had her full name and things that he wishes for her. And then it had her husband's name and things he wishes for him. And on these um, lists that he did, um, some of them were like medical bills, distance from the family, chronic fatigue, poverty. Um, Wait, those are things he wished upon? He wished illness on their infant daughter. <clears throat> oh, the fuck? <laughs> he... Oh. Um, Oh God. He said obesity for the husband, obesity, medical issues, loss of faith, loss of jobs, um, distance from the him... family, like he's distanced from his wife. Oh my God. And he, like he put sick daughter all her life. And she, she was two months at this time, this baby. And that was just kind of like, we were like, 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 what voodoo. kind of person could do this? Right. And he had voodoo stick figure dolls uh... on these notes in this freezer that he put them in. And we're like, what kind of person would do this? Like, we were shocked and appalled. Right. Like, how could you be with someone who could do this? And we found out about this six months later. She hadn't moved across the country for him yet when this happened. She, they had met, like, they had been together a total of, like, three times. So I'm like, if your boyfriend of a couple of months could do this and say these things about your sister, your brother-in-law, and your infant niece, what else can he do? Like, what else is he oh, capable man, of? That is scary. And now we're all scared of crossing him. Yeah. Like, what if we say something bad about him? Am I going to have this list? Am I going to have these things that he well, wishes upon me? Well, you're probably scared me? for your sister too, who's like in, in yes. like enmeshed with this guy. Is is she yes. able to see any clarity? When I mean, when you clearly define the the issues that you have, which which are obvious to, to us, just hearing. A They're brief big, snippet, right? of it, snippet of it's his puddle. Weird, it's a weird thing. <laughs> Just having heard some of his puddle, yeah. uh, splashing around <laughs> in his puddle for a little bit, I feel like um, it's clear to us. But uh, have you attempted to make it clear to this to, to your sister? And how, is she just not? Is it like a classic abusive relationship that she's just not able to see? We have no idea. Like we've had multiple conversations with her about it. Like, how can you not see this? Like, this is his character, and she's like, I don't think this is character. It's not who he is. But how does she but justify that? I mean, you have it in writing. Yeah. Like when you say he's wished yeah. ill upon an infant, like it doesn't get worse than that. That's, that is my, that's like no. genocide. That's, and that's what we said. We're like, okay, there's one thing you can say something about depraved. my sister. You can say something about my brother-in-law. But when you say something about an innocent child, that's, wild. that's just like, we're like, that's, it's done. How, like, how she, can you how wish she, that upon someone? Yeah, how did, how did she, I'm curious how she justified that. I mean, that's pretty. She just says it wasn't, it's not who he said, it's not who he is. Like, it's not. And she feels like they were justified in it because they didn't, um, they weren't respectful and open to their to her relationship. Disrespect. It's depraved. It's like it says so much mm -hmm. about this person. I, it, you should Google borderline personality disorder because um, 
I've okay. had some experience with that, and it sounds like this guy might be uh, adjacent to that or, or fully um, uh, correspond with, with that. Because it's so out of left field. It, it, well, like, it, we it think is. he's a little bit more narcissistic and manipulative, too. Like, he has not acknowledged it. He has not apologized for it. And in fact, like, because we found out about this on New Year's Day. He, in this letter, he put, which brings me up with what my friends and colleagues called the puddle. I have vision boards full of drastic, exaggerated, positive goals for my partner, my kids, my crew, and myself. Oh boy. The key is exaggeration and creativity so that you create the reality that your mind envisions. It works. On the flip side, I, have, I also have the puddle, oh boy. which is a vision board of my enemies. Three people oh. have reached that level, okay. two of which have sued me, and both of them now owe me more money than what they sued for. Your sister and brother-in-law are now there. Are there now? And honestly, oh, I barely so think about evil. them. It's evil. I, yeah, it's like, it's like I put their villainous. little papers into the. I, I put their little papers onto the into the bottom of the freezer and forgot they were there until re- recently. I stand by my vision board. Well, and your sister is, has she read this letter? She she was cc'd in this letter. And what is, how does, I just don't understand where she's at. Because who cares about this guy, ultimately? Like, you're never, you're not going to be in his life. Like, once they break up, it's like, but, but like, I'm worried about your sister. And I'm sure you are too, because it sounds like y'all are close. Well, she's moved across the country. So she lived across the country. She quit her job. She works for his ex-wife. She, like, is essentially a bona fide nanny for his kids. Like, she has no part of her, like, her individuality in this new life. She's moved away from her family. She's isolated herself and inserted herself into his he sounds his like, life in his realm. But like yeah. where we're at right now is like, I want to have a relationship with her. I just don't know how to have a relationship with her when she's involved with him. I, that makes sure, sense. Sure. I, yeah, I get that. <laughs> because I, I feel like, the, I think the religious background is, is important context. Yeah. It's a tricky thing, you know, that shame and judgment you can feel, yeah. especially if you, yeah. as you get older, you, you just find yourself growing away from the church that you grew up in. And... Mm-hmm. There are a lot of judgy, mm-hmm. um, not great people who can make you feel very <laughs> yeah, bad about 100%. your choice and yeah. like you're going to burn in hell. And this is like who yeah. that, that, that can be a very toxic environment oh, and yeah. it can affect your mental health feeling like you're like constantly judged and shamed by your community. So it, it yes. wouldn't shock me at all that this guy is leveraging that. Yeah. And well, he grew up Mormon too. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Like, like, but he, so <laughs> he knows. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So there's a bond he, there. He knows the mindset mm-hmm. that is required to be participate in something like yeah. that. Yeah. Curology is a game-changing custom scare made for you by a dermatology provider. They will create a custom prescription cream for your specific goals. Whether that's tackling acne, clogged pores, skin texture, dark spots, fine lines, or something else, you start by taking an online quiz. It's super easy. It's an online skin quiz. Upload photos, and if it's a good fit, only if it's a good fit, they'll ship you your formula right to your door. And it even has uh, your name on the bottle. And if you're on the acne side of things, I think it's really good that you send in actual photos of your face because, like, there's different kinds of acne. And so you're ensuring that you're going to get a formula that is, like, targeted to specifically what's going on with your skin. I, I love it, and uh, I felt uh, like uh, my skin was glowing a little bit more. Get started with Curology just like I did with a f- free 30-day trial at Curology.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Just pay $5 for shipping and handling. That's C-U-R-O-L-O-G-Y dot com slash V-I-A-L-L to start your free 30-day trial today. Cancel anytime. Prescription subject to consultation. Ladies, let's talk about your nails. Let's talk about your nails because Olive in June is making your nail experience more fun and easier than ever before. Okay, I'm going to level with you. Manicures are expensive. They're expensive and they look good. And so Olive in June comes in really handy because you can get manicure quality nails at home. The press-ons, I'm wearing them right this instant, look so good. They look like high quality gel manicures um, and everything that you need to give yourself good nails comes in this perfect little kit so it's all right there together there's cuticle pushers there's stuff to buff your nails the whole thing is perfect Um, and it comes out to two dollars a manicure which is in think about that you know how much a manicure is it's way more than two dollars so it's like you know when you're doing your nails and like the left one if you're right hand dominant the left one flawless show-stopping never been done before 
And then when it comes time to do the right one, it gets a little bit botched. They are so smart. They know the struggle. And so they made a brush designed to make it easy to do your nails with both hands, even the non-dominant one. I gave mine to Natalie and she is obsessed. So there is that too. And getting beautiful salon perfect nails at home is now a dream come true with Olive and June. Your new nail life is here. Visit oliveandjune.com slash V-I-A-L-L for 20% off your first Manny system. That's O-L-I-V-E-A-N-D-J-U-N-E dot com slash V-I-A-L-L for 20% off your first Manny system. Woohoo! I, I think you can have a relationship with her even though she's with him. I think the best you can do is, and you've probably heard me say some version of this when it comes to friends, is like, you know, be careful what you share with her because, mm -hmm. you know, any information you share with her, you should assume is going to get to him, right? Which I always assume anyway, yeah. But you can still ask, like, just make her feel well, loved. Uh, loved and welcomed mm -hmm. and ask her questions about yeah. her life and just so that, like, the hope is, is that mm -hmm. if things don't go well with this guy, that she will feel safe enough to leave. Right. And and what you yes. don't want is to hurt, to isolate herself so much, and then the family's just like, so whatever. And then she gets to a period of this relationship where it's not going great, where then she feels stuck and she leans into that relationship. Yeah. And then it's just mm -hmm. like calcified. Then it's like, she sounds like an untethered, she's some, somewhat untethered. And it's mm -hmm. untethered people, when they do tether themselves to something, can do it. Uh, you know, against the advice of friends and family and like it, better judgment. And so I, I think Nick's right. I think it, whenever you lead with, I know it sounds tokey and cheesy, but if you lead with love and if you just come from a place yeah. of like, if you set your intentions to be uh, very clear, my, my, my intention is to love you and this is how I'm loving you, mm -hmm. which might mean setting real clear boundaries too, which can be an act of love. And that's We've all told her that, like we've all, except for the one that she, like the one that she did this to, like, she's just kind of like, I'm done. I don't want anything to deal with this anymore. And I, she's entitled to those feelings. Yeah, and those, that makes sense. Like, yeah. I feel I, the same way. But we've all come to her and said, like, we love you. We will always love you. The door will always be open. But this has changed the dynamic of our relationship. I don't feel like I can be open with you. I don't feel like I can yeah. be, like, I don't feel like I can tell her things because that I'm sucks. afraid that if I wrong him... He's going yeah. to wish bad things upon me. And my yeah, family. I get that. But I maybe try to pull back from that. I mean, you said that and you okay. set the boundary, but I, I wouldn't call her up and be like, change my mind. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But maybe over mm -hmm. time, slowly just keep reaching out more, right? And just try okay. to build back up that relationship. Still knowing that you can't fully trust everything you say. So just keep your personal life out of it. But just make it about okay. like ask it about her life and and what's going on. Maybe talk about your favorite reality TV show, whatever it is. Just like have some type of connection that you are you know enjoying okay. together. So you just build this relationship. So she feels like you're a phone call away if she needs you. Yeah. If you know what I'm See, saying. This guy she does reach like, out to us. Say that again. And I always respond. I always respond to her when she reaches yeah. out. I just I have not reached out to her. I think you should do more of that and your mom should do more of that okay. and just don't ask about him. My mom talks to her every day. Yeah, don't ask <laughs> about uh, him. Yes. I don't, you know, I, I don't like, because okay. because you just kind of just you know how you feel, but we, 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 we all hate him, right? Mm -hmm. So if you ask about him, he's going to become a <laughs> yeah. topic of the conversation. And he it's wants be that, by the way. Like, yeah. People like that feed off of uh, that kind of energy and, and being talked about and drama. And if you, if you cut them, it's like, it's like not giving him oxygen if you just don't engage. Okay. All that stuff about the vision board. Also, what a fucking, what a weird, it has a vision board about positive Isn't things Isn't that weird? Too, and like that he stands by it. We're just like, what? This adult like, man with kids is like, like uh, it. Uh, I don't know. It's, that's all wild. But like, I think you, Nick's right. Like, you know how you feel about him. You can be very clear about that. And and mm -hmm. don't, when he provokes, when he sends sends these things, don't give it any credence. Don't, just don't no. respond. Okay. Right? And always come from a place of love with your sister. I would be just be really clear. This is how I feel about him. Mm -hmm. This is why it, okay. it scares me, you know, um, but I love mm -hmm. you and, you know, in, in whatever way you think um, is appropriate, but just be really like, set your boundaries in a loving way. Okay. What you just have to be careful for, of is like, when we, when we warn people about other people, mm -hmm. And a lot of times yeah. people will do it with like their crush, like you're dating your best friend and all of a sudden like you haven't like shot your shot with them and they start dating some fuck boy or whatever. And we'll, we have a habit mm -hmm. of warning them. All it does is like trigger their ego and yeah. what they do is want to prove you wrong. 
Uh, right? Yeah. So you want to make yeah. sure that she's not actively trying to prove you and the family wrong. So the less you act, because you know, you've already said your piece. So yeah. like talking about more mm -hmm. red flags or whatever, right. it's just not going to, it's actually going to yeah. have the adverse effect. She was, it's going to, mm -hmm. she's going to lean in and try to make excuses and then convince herself and you guys that she's making the right decision with the help of him just bullshitting her all the time. Yeah. So like, I, I think mm -hmm. you just got to be really careful about like, making sure your conversations with her are no longer about that relationship as hard as it might be. Like keep tabs on things, but like she's yeah. there. There's nothing you can do. You have voiced your frustration and just make it mm -hmm. a safe environment for her to at any point, like come visit, maybe take a girl's trip. I would convince your older sister mm -hmm. to do the same. The one that has, seems to have influence on her, the, the, re the very religious one. Uh, if there's a way to get her okay. to act like, you know, the, the Jesus would maybe, yeah. you know, really. Turn I know that's what we always say. It's like Jesus accepted everyone. But. Yeah, exactly. Even people with puddles, <laughs> puddle boards. Yeah, because um, this is a goal to get, get hit, like make no mistake. We're just we're, people who don't like infants. Yeah, it's we're crazy. trying to remove this guy from the family's <laughs> life, but we'd have to figure out a way to do it. Yeah, right? yeah. I say yeah. choke it. I say suffocate the toxicity with love. Yeah, I mean, it sounds cheesy, but like truly, what would Jesus do? Yeah, the more you lead with love and and just ignore him when he mm -hmm. says things like that when he does things when she mentions him and there's contention whatever I, just process it in your own way and and don't just say try to leave don't him out of it, it and just focus on my relationship with her i i i really think it'll reveal itself yeah I'm, I'm sorry yeah. for you guys yeah, sorry like going through struggling. this <laughs> Wild story. Sorry, I have two brothers. Like it's just, it's just yeah. different. It's like when we've been, like we've been, I mean, because we're only 16 months apart, me and her. So wow. like we've been close our entire lives. So it's just kind of strange get, not having like you'll these get group it back. chats. It, 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 it'll be stronger if you just like hang in there. That's what I think. I was like, once we get through it, 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 should, it, it could strengthen it. I just hope it goes through. But it, yeah, if your other sister, I think Justin's right. If she could extend an olive branch. branch. She could, and, I, and I get that would be yeah. tough because that would, I would be I know, I was like, I don't know. I, I was know. like, that would be tough. But, I, but if she could, that would be but really But for the sake of your, for the sake of your sister, I mean, like, it, yeah. it, you know, it's don't give him any more power um, by responding, yeah. by giving any credence. He's, uh, let him just kind of like scream in the dark and, and spin around. He'll, he'll, he'll get tired eventually and, and, and he'll reveal himself <laughs> so. to her, unfortunately. All right. Hang in there. And <laughs> Thanks for calling. The best to your niece. How's it going? Hey there. I'm Anne, and I'm 34 years old. Hi, Anne. How can Hi, I help? Anne. So generally why I'm calling is because a friend of mine has been unusually less responsive than before, and I don't really know what to do. So uh, background over quarantine, kind of like everybody else, um, I was pretty lonely and disconnected. Um, so I started getting into online gaming and Twitch. I started chatting with a small streamer, we can call her Tiffany. Eventually, we started playing together alongside a longtime friend of hers, Tammy. Um, I would talk to both of them on Twitch, but Tiffany and I texted all the time, talked on the phone. Um, I sort of sensed that Tammy was jealous of my like relationship with Tiffany. Um, I never confirmed. Tiffany always said, no, it's just like in my head. I only mention it because it's the only thing I can think of that makes sense or like our rift. Um, so early on, Tiffany mentioned to me that occasionally she goes into depressions where she doesn't want to talk to anyone until she's feeling better. Um, so it was very unlike the Tiffany that I knew, but okay. So eventually after a while, we continued talking all the time every day. And then a very sad event happened in her life and she was really upset. So we talked about it, but eventually she said she needed some time to herself, which of course I understood. So other than like generally worrying about her not feeling well, I didn't think that much of her absence. Um, one day I saw that she had started streaming again. So somewhat notably, uh, Tammy was streaming with her and she hadn't said anything to me about it. So I immediately get on, I write in her chat. Um, and as soon as I did, I realized that she had removed me mm -hmm. as a moderator in her chat, in her like channel, which isn't important at all other than to note that like there's no limit to it. So it felt very intentional. Um, so I was obviously hurt, but I didn't say anything about it. Um, I just tried to continue the friendship like usual. Um, I would get responses, but kind of short answers. We would still hang out a little bit, play online games and game together sometimes. Um, but it just kind of felt weird. But at the same time, real life was getting back to normal. So I figured just everyone was getting busier. I didn't really think about it. Eventually, though, we hadn't talked for a while, and I was moving across the country. 
um, and had recently gotten a haircut. So I sent her a message just to like let her know. And she responded, acted super excited, said she loved my haircut. But when I followed up being like, oh, and then ho- hopefully if COVID restrictions ease up, I can come visit you since now I'll be closer. No response. So after that, I would try to send messages every couple of weeks or like a month little to no responses. It had been a while without a response and I decided to text her around the holidays. Just got back the standard, oh, happy holidays, hope you're well kind of thing. Um, Since then, it's pretty much been me responding to her after like a day and her responding back after like a week or two weeks. Um, Mm. So two weeks ago, (laughs) she responded to one of my messages after like a a week and was like, oh, I'm trying to get better about responding to people more quickly. Um, I've gotten this new boyfriend around the time that I had moved um, and they were spending every waking moment together. And so the next day, again, I sent her a message back. And a week later, she responds. But again, it's a really long message asking specific questions about me and my life. Um, in my message, I had suggested watching a show together. So she was throwing out suggestions for what we could watch. So again, next day I follow up and again, radio silence. Mm. And that was when I wrote in to you. Um, and then since then I got a response four days ago, again, saying she was sorry. She had started a new job and her sleep schedule was off again, suggesting other shows that we should watch together. So I have two questions for you. One general thoughts. I'm sure you're going to talk about my ego. Uh, and two, uh, what should I do from here? I've had plenty of friendships that change, fizzle out. Um, it's fine if that's what it is. Um, I'm mainly just confused and I don't mind being pathetic and just continuing to try and waiting to see, um, if it gets our friendship back, but I don't want to like bother her. You know what I mean? Like if if it's fine, if, if it's, fizzling out are going to be a different style but have you met her in person yet no so she lives uh very far away so she hasn't even met tammy who they've known each other for like 15 years she lives in a different country it was like a virtual kind of friendship are you suggesting that it no i mean you and well that the always next question is it's it's a real person we're not worried about each other because like the Twitch community yeah. is, it's a little I, different than like online dating being ghosted. Uh-huh. Like it's right. The Twitch is playing games. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're playing games and you kind it's of like you, live stream, right? like yeah. live streaming yeah. video games and let people watch and yeah. like you play together and compare no, like it's, yeah, it's very okay. interactive. So there'd be no real reason for her to have, to, or this person to have created some avatar of a person no yeah no i mean we, we video chat all the oh, time okay I mean, okay I, okay i'd be very surprised okay sorry yeah just... the, some of the obvious catfish no, red flags it doesn't seem like they're sure yeah they're there i mean have you uh, first an obvious one is like it seems like you've kind of addressed it a little bit well, in terms of like the the distance but well sorry sorry to interrupt when, when you said it bothered me but i didn't say anything uh, just the first time that she i, I wonder if that was the point of that that would have been a good point of entry in terms of just being uh, honest i I know it's like you don't want to be i've been by the way i've been in your shoes i know that feeling um is this person how does this person really feel you start getting paranoid did i do something wrong i really think i do that all the time uh, all, (laughs) all of that can be completely erased if you were just totally honest. I mean, if you were, if you get to the point where you're calling in a a show and and wanting advice, I would say you had an instinct to address something early on. You know, I I was hurt by this. And if that's too much for somebody, if they feel like that's, you know, that's, uh, they can't really bear that burden of a friend. That's, I feel like something that's, you have to kind of do in a relationship, any relationship is just be honest. Have you, but, and so to clarify, you haven't really actually addressed it and said hey we used to be much closer and talk more frequently and it's and i and i would like to have that back have you ever like had that type of honest conversation with her yeah so to address both points uh one i have no problem with confrontation uh-huh, in my okay. life like that is not something i struggle <laughs> okay, with um, sure. so i would have i would have no problem bringing yeah. it up to her like once we were talking a little bit more right, frequently right. But it just seems weird to be like, hey, I haven't talked to you in a month. No, I know. Specifically, <clears throat> you removed me as, yeah. Yeah, um, it's but hard yeah, to I, find I intend, a way in. Exactly. I intend to bring it up at some point. Um, 
And then, yes. So I would have to go back and check my message. But at some point I said something along the lines of, hey, like, it was like I had said, sent a couple of messages back to back. And I was like, hey, you know, I, I don't know what happened, but if you know, it's bothering you, I don't want to bother you. I won't just like keep spamming you with messages. Mm-hmm. You know, just wanted to see what's up. And then eventually when she responded, it's of course like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, that's the strange was, part. You mentioned that you don't, you don't mind confrontation. Um, are you often sometimes a friend that people will go to that you have no problem giving your opinion on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like that, right? And mm-hmm. so I will sometimes, you know, it works for the show. People call in. But I will get self-conscious in my head sometimes of like, did I overstep my boundaries? Did I... Huh. Did I give an opinion that yeah. they didn't want to hear? And especially in those instances where I notice people di- like not necessarily dissing themselves, but I hear le- from them less, that's when I get in my head about some of my insecurities or fears of like, did I step in it? Was I too pushy? Did I say something that, you know, rubbed them the wrong way? You know, and I have no doubt that you were thinking I was supportive, I was this, but like, do, do you ever get in your head about that? Because I'm just wondering, hearing you talk more about like your friendship dynamics and your personality, you remind me a little bit of you know some qualities I have, and that's where I can, I can get in the weeds about this stuff and make it a bigger deal in my head. It's and the stories wonder, you tell yourself, yeah. And I'm just wondering if if a lot has to your your feeling about this whole situation has more to do with that than anything. Not that you know you don't. You can simultaneously recognize that you not being removed as a mo- as a moderator is not something that's a big deal, and it can still trigger an insecurity of yours about like how people perceive yeah. you overall. I think it's really natural. Yeah, um, definitely, it's the most confusing thing to me because there's no reason to like if it had been like, oh, but there's a limit. Maybe she wanted to add somebody else. I wouldn't have thought twice. Not about that it. you know Just of, the fact. but yeah. there may have been something that. That I think that's why it's important to address that and, and um, you know, use whatever confrontational spirit you have, but do it in a loving way. You know, I, I would just be really clear I, and, and say, look, this might be in my head I, and, and put it on yourself. I, I, this could be my own insecurities. I just want to be honest. You're my friend. I like you. I want to be, I want to be clear and honest with you. And this kind of hurt me. And if I'm, if I'm off, then I'll be relieved. And if there's something we can talk about and get past, you know, I'd like to do that too because I, I miss your company. One thing I kind of slightly disagree, I'm curious yeah. what you say, is the way I would say it is I wouldn't say I was hurt off the bat. I would just open it up and say, can I ask you a question as to why? I'm just curious if it was something, if I could have done something different. Because when you know you're going to hurt someone's feelings, I just suspect, that mm-hmm. I worry of this friend if you're trying to really get an answer. Mm-hmm. Because that's what it seems like it bothers you. It's just like, you just want to know. Yeah, is, so you uh, can move on. What's the reason? Right. I just, I need some clarity. Right. You know, as a ref, you seem like a reflective person and it, and that that's the one thing you can, I, so I can you, see you ruminating over this. So you're saying lead with a different way, with a lighter, like lead in just a Just like self-care. a little lighter of like, Hey, this really hurt my feelings. I need to know why you did this. Yeah. I could see a person trying to downplay it then and be like, and play I it know, off. I know, I know. There's got to be a way to finesse it. You don't yeah. want to be, I know that's why. So I, I'm just running it. Yeah, bring it up and just try to finesse it in a way where it's not. Give them the out. Make yeah, it easy yes. for them. If, if in fact it is. Hey, I was just wondering. Uh, <laughs> I know. It's like. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, it's and then, a me thing. Is there anything I could have done differently? You know, I don't know. And, but then you get it off your chest. I, I would say get it off. Get it like be honest with her in, in whatever way you seem it, it, that feels appropriate, and and then put it away. You know, and then like if she doesn't respond, uh, you know, you have to then be be strong enough to put it put it down. I suspect she'll respond, but be prepared for getting an answer that doesn't satisfy you. It's kind of vague, you know. So how would you communicate her caring? How would you communicate this to, to Tiffany? A friend? Yeah. Well, just like we said, like, I would just say, can I just ask you, I would, if it were me, yeah. I would just say, I'm kind of a neurotic, I would put it on I'm me. I'm Tiffany, I'll be Tiffany I, reading this. I'm a neurotic person. This is something that just kind of like, I, I'm. Oh boy, did here you we go. Un- like, did you not moderate me? Cause like, I know I'm, I'm probably <sighs> in my head about it, but like, t- weirdly, I, I, it's a me thing, but like, did I do something to upset you? Look. I feel like you should talk to Tammy about this because I don't want to get involved with <laughs> between you and Tammy. Well, it's not a thing. I just no. So, everything's fine. I've just so been something busy. happened. I've been busy touching my new boyfriend, and okay. I can't get my hands off him. 
And it's it's not all about you, okay? Yeah. No. I mean, well, if she bad. says if she says that, yeah, maybe it's it, it, it could be just like that's the thing. I, I'm assuming people have different expectations when it comes to like virtual relationships and friendships and things like that. This new boyfriend. Yes. Also, it, the it, depression that she deals with. Yeah. I mean, that that is <laughs> she did make that pretty clear. How how long does she go away for when she is depressed like that? And and have you ever talked to her about the source of her depression? Yeah. So when she mentioned it to me before, it sounds like long periods of time, which is why I wasn't super surprised or hurt by her like going away for a while. It's just concerned. the coming back process. That yeah. was weird. Yeah. And of course, very concerned. She and I both deal with mental health issues. Mm. One of the things that we bonded over, yeah. this was over something very specific, like a tragic event that happened okay. with a friend of hers. Oh. So it was a very specific oh, thing that boy. I'm sure triggers other feelings and, yeah. you know, all of that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, and part of like our friendship, like I've had plenty of friends, have plenty of friends right now. It's all, you know, good. She and I like really bonded. Like we felt like we were the same person. Like we would say things like, I can't believe like you existed over here yeah. in this like other country for so long. Uh-huh. And we think the exact same way. We just handle life the opposite. Uh-huh. So I tend to be confrontational and to the point, tell people what I think, don't really care how people think of me. And she's the opposite where she has all those same thoughts. Yeah, yeah exactly. Ostrich and wants people to like her and is super nice. So she would like have me, she would have a problem with somebody oh. say, and I would be the one that would be like, Hey, why did you do that thing? Like, you so know. to Nick's point, you, you would have to really like soften the entry. If you were to ask for, you know, for, for these answers to your question, I would, I mean, I, I would, I think it's worth it. It does sound like you really care. And it sounds like it's a friendship worth, um, you know, investigating, and, and and if then she says something wishy-washy or vague or and then you give it like one more outreach. I would say I would give yourself like because the truth is like people will give you the answer. It sounds like she, she may be already giving you the answer, but you, you just want some more clarity. But if you then get some vague response two weeks later, make one more overture, maybe invite her to a show you're doing or something. And then if then and, and then st- and then I would remove yourself because it's not really healthy, okay. I think. I agree with that. And, but also like, you know, you could just, pe- when people get boyfriends or girlfriends, I know, like they, I know I'm, a lot of people fall off. If any of my cliff. friends are listening, they're like, yeah, I haven't heard from you in a couple of months. Like it, it is, that is true. You so get there's, excited. There's a little bit of that. And so, and cause the way you describe your friendship, you know, whether it's a heterosexual friendship or a guy and a girl, when you, when you're single, you might not be romantic, but you you lean on some of those friendships for that intimacy you would otherwise get in a relationship right. all the time. Yeah. And even if it's not a sexual one, there's an intimacy that you have. And she probably, you had an intimacy mm-hmm. with this friend and this new guy in her life is clearly taking up some of that space. Yeah. So there's a little bit of grace I think you can yeah. extend there. Just like, yeah, I ultimately, I just think, let her know that you missed what you had and you just want to make sure that you're on the same page. And maybe there's a, and if not, if I just want, you to know, it, maybe you can make it real vague saying, I just, I value your friendship and I miss the connection we had in the time. And I just want you to know, cause you know, I'm a, you know, you know me, if I ever upset you or anything, like just, I want you to be able to tell me because. I'd rather like just have you let yeah, me know, yeah. Rather than make it easy. Wonder, because the point of fracture may have been around the time. I, I would agree with you were it not for that, um, her being removed as the moderator. That that seems to be like a, like almost like a hostile. There's could something could be, but it could, that could have been a reactive thing. Yeah, to something yeah. which you want an answer about. So like, I would investigate that. I, I would drive me nuts. What did I do? I think this is one of those things, and I've actually learned this. I learned this from Darlene, my therapist. They're mm-hmm. like, I in the past, I have a hard time waiting on like it's like, oh, something bugging me, I have to get it out. Yes. Right? I've learned there'll be something I've like been in a disagreement with like Natalie, my girlfriend, and there'll be we're fighting about a thing, but in the fight, something will come up that that bothered me. You you react to it. You react. I reacted to something. Yes, yes. And I've learned that like I can't forget it. I need to bring it up. Yeah. But like bringing it up and compounding it, like let's just get through this, this thing we're going through. And then at another time, saying, "Hey, there was just something I just wanted to bring up in a non-fighting environment where you're just saying, "Hey, we don't even need to fight about that." But next time this happens, it would mean a lot to me. It changes if, everything. If like you 
this is why this bothered me. Yes. And in the future, could we go about it a different way? And I just think if you can talk to her and and build that connection up and just say, you know what, can I just ask you something that oh, one man. time? How many of those bachelor conflicts would be resolved if they were to just not react, yeah. step back, to remove the emotion from it, and then, you know. Exactly. Because if you start off in a place of really, you've lost a little rapport with her, and and now you reach out with a conflict. It's she's going to be more You're, inclined yeah. to be on the defensive. So it's I do true. think you should wait because it's not a. It's bothering you, but it's not going to stop you from talking or watching these movies together and things like that. We could watch. He's just not that into you because it's go. kind of like that. Yes. You know? Yes. Do you know and, what I mean? And then yeah. pause it during the part where that so, advice is given, and just look at her <laughs> pointedly and say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Very passive aggressively. Mm -hmm. Do you connect with that at all, <laughs> Tiffany? <Is> that, <laughs> if he's not calling you, he's not. This is it's, that's the answer. Yeah. What do you think, Tiffany? Mm -hmm. And then let let her answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but that'll be. I think you're right, Nick. That is good advice in person. Always better. Take it off the stream. All right. Well, thank you for calling in. Thank hopefully, you. Yeah. Hopefully, this was helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll open for the best. Thanks. Bye bye. How's it going? Uh, good. How can we help? So I am in a six-year-long relationship, and uh, it's the healthiest relationship I've, I've ever been in. The only issue that's kind of happening at the moment is I'm looking towards the future. I finish uh, my nursing practitioner's school in a year, and, uh, and, you know, like, I'm 32. I'm thinking about having children. Yeah. And uh, when I talk about marriage with my boyfriend, he uh, says he's not ready. And he says he doesn't know when he'll be ready. Mm. And he, this has been going on for a year now. And I feel, <sighs> it feels like I'm happy to call in because I feel like I'm in a problem with no good solution because mm. Mm -hmm. I don't want to walk away from somebody I love and care about and have been with for six years. And we've been living together for two years. I don't want to like force him into a proposal and a marriage <laughs> that feels terrible. And it also feels, you know, terrible to be with somebody for this long. And like, they don't know if they want to get married to me. You know, I'm kind of like, how do you not know? We've, you know, been together for this long. Do they want to have kids? You want to have kids, you've mentioned. Yeah, yeah. And and they talk about having kids, and that's kind of a, another part of it where I really want to go back to California, where I'm from and where my family is, and he really wants to go back to Michigan and kind mm -hmm. of sees raising a family in Michigan while, you know, I see I see that happening in California for Je me. Jenny, can I ask you, what, what are his parents... Did, are they still together, his parents? And what's their relationship his, like? Yeah, you know, his parents are still together. Um, I think the kind of family dynamic and, you know, Nick, I know you're from the Midwest, so I'm not trying to, like, throw any shade no, no, or stereotype yeah. with it. But, you know, like, his family is, like, they don't really talk uh, openly about, mm -hmm. like, feelings or, like... yeah. It's it's very kind of like yeah 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 and my family is like you know how are you feeling like yeah. what's going on I come from two different this. sides as well yeah um, yeah exactly hmm. uh, do, do do you think he did he but did he grow up with um, a strong I example of marriage I just wonder if some of his marriage I issues are traceable and and if they're identifiable. You know, I don't think it stems from his family. I think the the big factor is that this is his first like real relationship. Yeah. Um, he mm -hmm. hasn't had any like real relationship or real other like s sexual romantic experiences. Yeah, before. like uh, for sexually, you're his first. Yeah. I I did. Uh, I'm going to reference a movie I did, which is really it's not the first time on the show but it's still embarrassing. It's this movie called Comet, and there's this great line written by this guy, Sam Ishmael, and he says, I'm dancing with the actor, with Emmy Rossum, and she says, why wouldn't you want this forever? You know, why wouldn't you want this forever? It's such a beautiful moment. We feel so at peace with each other. And I just say, because forever is scary. Yeah. And, and it may 
come down to something philosophical like that for him. It may have, my point is, it may have nothing to do with you and just an idea that he's grappling with. So it, it might not be time, it might not be enough to jump ship. I don't, I don't know. I don't know enough about the relationship, but it may just be an idea that he struggles with um, because I, I can relate to that. Uh, the idea of, of it's a it's permanence and for somebody who hasn't explored been with other people you know m maybe he's thinking deep down in, in a way you know something that's hard to admit to someone you love that i'm just i don't want to i don't want it to end the, the the potential for meeting people i don't know it could be something scary like that that you might need to really address with him yeah, yeah I, I think yeah, of course, of course. And I'm, you know, trying to be empathetic towards that. I think like, you know, the main question that I have in my mind is like, how long yeah. do I wait? Right. You know? So question, do you think, is it, is it any type of like significant future planning he avoids or is it more about marriage? Because like we do live in a time where marriage is becoming less and less popular and mm -hmm. common it's still mainstream but like there are a lot of people who are just cohabitating mm -hmm. who are having kids outside of marriage living in sin yeah living in sin That's i mean me personally i've always thought i'd get married and have kids and i plan on getting married and having kids but having kids is a significant priority for me yeah. and getting married is just like i mean if my partner wants to do it i'll L do it likewise yeah you know and so i'm wondering so romantic have you i know if you <laughs> if you have have you had conversations with him about this where it's really the th the marriage the legal money aspect where it's just like a lot of people have become more pragmatic where they're just like i don't know marriage mm -hmm. is forever and i don't feel like sharing every you know i don't know mm -hmm. but like I, you seem like a person i want to have kids with i know that's very unromantic but uh, i'm just trying to figure out where he's at in terms of avoiding progressing this relationship it's been hard having conversations about it just because they often kind of like get heated very quickly uh, and he's just down i am or both yeah. of you yeah i'm i i mean i think like I think it's a little bit of both, you know, like yeah. it's, it's, we can't provide something that she wants. Yeah. And, and uh, it must be frustrating for both of them. It must be frustrating for him too. Well, this is also like uh, one of those tough situations because this is a conversation about like non-negotiables. Right. And, and like well, how the reason why you feel like there's a no win situation mm -hmm. is because you recognize that to get what you want ultimately in life, which is to have a family and a partner and, you know, build that kind of <clears throat> lasting relationship of love, that it might require you to leave this relationship. And mm -hmm. like someone who doesn't, like not wanting to get married and not wanting to have kids or living in a different part of the country are all non-negotiables. These are not like pet peeves mm -hmm. of like, I don't really, I can get over them like yeah. being sloppy. And despite you having this great relationship and it's been six years long and all those things, you're stuck with, you know, this ultimately what might end up being a decision where you just have to find a way that he might relate to your point of view. Because what I'm hearing you from you is we've been dating for six years, regardless of whether you've been his first or not, or the fact that forever is a long time. These are all potentially valid feelings that you even can empathize with but like oh, you know i guess you know it's only partner and that'd mm -hmm. be fun and like yeah forever it's fucking long we can't predict the future but you have the right to want to like progress the relationship forward and grow it yeah right he is ultimately asking you to just do this whatever this is and not advance the relationship and that's not something it doesn't sound like you're all that interested in in doing yeah. and nor should you and quite frankly, he probably understands the idea of like things not ever growing or progressing past like this kind of stagnant relationship. And so you are, you are, I am confirming, unfortunately, that you are in a tough situation, but I think it is about, we've been together long enough that it's fair for me to ask you questions about the mm -hmm. future. And maybe it's, I don't want to pressure you into get married and I don't want to pressure you into kids, but I, what I don't want is to keep doing this without growing a connection because you've been together for so long it feels like it's gotten to the point where he's actively 
trying to connect, like he's trying to almost distance himself at the risk of you wanting more from the relationship. So yeah. he's like almost saying, okay, we're, we're not, we're not going to get any closer. We're not going to build this relationship any further because like, she's going to want to get married or I'm going to have to move to California or have mm-hmm. kids. And that's not fair to you. Yeah. Have you yeah. considered taking, I mean, taking, having space? Have you considered kind of going back off to your corners and seeing how that works? You go to LA, he stays in Michigan and, and, I mean, it's kind of like I have, you know, thought about that as, and especially like I've had conversations where, you know, that's been suggested. Like, what if I spend a little time in California and we're have an open relationship or whatever, but I'm just not, what do you I don't say to think, that? well, talking to a friend, they're like trying to problem solve this. Cause obviously like, you know, yeah. I wish you were the person I came to, but this is fantastic <laughs> for... Yeah, I don't know if leading with the open relationship yeah, is... I'm, I'm happy for your friends that he's not the first person you came to. Yeah. They'd be like, wait, why didn't you just ask us for your friends? You just went on a show? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do think, you know, weirdly enough, it, it reminds me of Jennifer Aniston's character and uh, he's just not that into you. With, what was it? It was with Ben Affleck and she like wanted to get yes. married. And, yes. And in that... And that so we we often sometimes just need a kind of kick in the pants yeah. or a reminder of like what we really have and what we appreciate. And that might be the fear of losing what he has. Yeah. Right now, he, it sounds like he's playing a game. Uh, it's like a game of chicken. He is trying to get you to accept the status quo because, hey, babe, it's happy. We're fine. Why ruin a mm-hmm. good thing type of thing? And that logically makes sense. And you're thinking... I. Like we're not in college. And like, it's also I want different more. for women, not to mansplain sure, yeah, the bio- biology. <laughs> <laughs> you got a biological clock if that's a concern. That's yeah. a valid concern. Men have the luxury of like, oh, I can wait. wait. Yeah. You know? So you might know. quite literally, I, and I wouldn't suggest an open relationship at all because I think if yeah, you're going no. to set a boundary about like what you want, he has to be afraid to lose you. He has yeah. to be afraid of losing the thing. And he's just going to have to accept that He's going to have to grow and advance on some level. Either that's with you or without you. Yeah, it's just not fair to expect you to stop growing and, and cultivating a stronger, uh, more committed relationship. I think what's been challenging is to like discern the difference between like a boundary and an ultimatum. Yeah, you know? that makes sense. Like To be like... If, you know, like, I, I just don't want to be the girl who's like, if there's not a ring on my finger and, you know, like, I don't want to get married I know, but there, it's, it's not about that. There could, there, they could be one and the same. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Ultimately, they, there might not be a difference. It might be just semantics or whatever you guys call it. You know, you call it a boundary. He's saying, like, well, you're giving me an ultimatum. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, well, I guess. But, sure. like, those are yeah. pillars for you. I always yeah. I like to think of... You know, what are your pillars? Like, what are the basics? What are the things you really need to be happy? Um, and it sounds like having children and living in a certain place um, are, are real pillars, are real basics. And if somebody can't provide that, it I, and the familiar is really addictive. I mean, I've been really, it's been an issue for me in the past. Like, you, you know, you're so familiar with each other that the idea of not being together, I know it's like daunting. It's, it's, it seems like, um, how do you even approach it? Um, but I think if you were to give each other time and space, give them like a rum spriga. You know how with the rum with rum spriggas, they they have like a you know the Amish have a ninety percent retention rate because they eighteen when they're eighteen they go off and they they go wild. They could do all the things they had envisioned, and then they realize like there's so much more safety and security in um, in, in what they had. I'm not saying that that's necessarily going to happen, but it might be nice to let the the steam on, the you know release the valve a little bit, as it were. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I the the pressure, um, you know, I yeah. think that he's feeling is it's it's also you know it's just stripping the oh no, it's going to be corrosive and you're yeah. going to start resenting one another and it's going to be a thing that just hangs in the air that just becomes more and more it, I mean, oppressive. Yeah, yeah, it's you know it has been hanging in the air and and like you know more recently he's he's like made kind of comments about, you know, like, well, you know, what kind of ring do you want and stuff like wow, that. He has. Huh. So, you know, he has like it, with it, you know, since I wrote you like in the past few days. Huh. So, um there's, you know, 
there's movement. I think I'm taking it with like, you know, a grain uh-huh. of salt. He's like, will a ring pop suffice? They're delicious. <laughs> They're cherry and wild raspberry. Um, so, oh, so he is broaching that. So he's making those overtures recently? Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, oh. he's kind of alluding to... It, it might just be, like you said, it might just be the idea, just getting past the idea of... Um, like, this, yeah. Permit. I, I get it. By the way, I'm 43 and I'm not married, so yeah. we're, I'm not really one to be giving advice to either of you about this, but I, I've been in... I, I've been in similar shoes. But it, and it doesn't sound like you're like, I need a ring on my favor, on my finger in the next six months, right? And that's why... Well, and- it, I'm, I mean, it is a little bit because when you- I finish school in a year, I'll be moving to back to California. That's my plan. And, and, you know, my mom has had had some health issues, so it's really important to me to be back close to family. Um, He must understand that though. Oh yeah. And he's like been supportive through like her surgery. Yeah. But nevertheless, you moving back home to, after you get done with school, does it necessarily have anything to do with you getting engaged or married or having kids per se? I mean, that is very true. And it's ideal. I, for whatever reason, I have not seen it that way. But in the sense that, like, it is security. I mean, no, it's... I, I get the logic. Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying, if you want to, you, you're going to have to massage this and finesse this a little bit too. Like, you love him. You want to be with him. Right now, as it stands, you would prefer him to propose to you you guys get married you have kids and you know you figure out we're going to live long term you're going to go back to california and be there for your mom and hopefully you guys can work around that but ultimately that sounds like the goal yeah right and yes biological clock it matters and things like that but i think you do want to separate try not to combine these all like if you're gonna if your mom has had some health issues you want to be there for your mom like that's just that's just what happened you know that's going to happen but like he doesn't have to propose to you by then. He could move out with you. You could, at that point, that could be a period where you have a little bit of distance and see how you guys feel. And that's yeah. where it doesn't become an ultimatum. I mean, at some point, you're just like, hey, is this not going anywhere? But like, uh, you're getting progress with him, you know, like you just want to make sure he's not just asking you that to like buy like, you know, six yeah. more years because he's yeah, never yeah, said he yeah. doesn't want to get married. He just says, He's not ready right now. All I'm saying is you need to get more clarity on what not now means to him. And you need to understand from him that he recognizes that you, he can't ask you to just have a stagnant relationship that you can't advance or grow things. I, and is he willing at all to move at all? Like what, what are, you need some sort of timeline or, you know, because you're just not okay with doing this. I, 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 I think I have an idea. I think you need to tell him, like be really honest and say what your fears are and ask him for the same. Ask him to do you the courtesy of telling you what his fears are about marriage and make it like safe for him to say that. Have like a, allow him to be vulnerable about that because there may be something that you can get past and it may be something that's like a little bit more um, difficult to do together. Uh, if it's, I just can't, I can't get my, I can't participate in the idea of permanence. I, I need to see what else is out there. There may be something like that, that you'll get, I think, a lot more clarity if you um, are vulnerable and, and share your fears with him. I think that's a great idea. I think that's great. And he should be able to have that conversation. Yeah. And if he's not, and if he's defensive and he's resistant to that, then I think that's a a big signal to you that maybe... Maybe he's never going to give you what you want yeah. anytime soon. Because at a minimum, he should be willing. That's a very opening, like welcoming. You lead with your fears. You're in a non-judgment place. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of this happening. And before you tell me not to worry and just be like, oh, whatever, that's never going to happen. Share with me like the mm-hmm. things that you're vulnerable about, like yeah. you said. Like, what is it about it that you, you know, like, and I, no judgment. I get it. Like, I Every, whatever your fears are, they're valid, but I would, I'd like yeah. to know what they are. Give him that space. And if he should be able to have that conversation with you. It'll be good for both of you. I mean, it'll be, I think it'll be the most clarifying thing. But if he gets defensive and like, when, and that's a huge red flag that he weaponized that. To uh, say it that, is. Uh, I, I, that, it is. This is why I won't marry. That's, that's pretty gnarly. You don't want to marry that. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's been tough. And 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 thinking about like reasons to get married has been on my mind. And I don't, it's it's kind of a hard pill to swallow for me, even like I'm a romantic, like and um I'm kind of traditional romantic ideas and yeah. to kind of get married like under this pre like under duress. It's just been very difficult to like swallow the pill of of being with somebody who doesn't know that they want to marry I me. I bet that's got to be. Of course, the situation is is painful. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I tr- try not to make it a about that though. I do think nowadays even more so with the freedom of not feeling the pressure to have to get married in your twenties. Forever is a long time. Uh, the divorce rates are higher than ever. Mm. Like it doesn't take long to figure out a lot of reasons that like would make marriage unappealing. So try not to make it about like his feelings towards you. That being said, I just think it's really important that you figure out whether this is a guy who can truly communicate with you about these kind of tough conversations and see if he has the ability to empathize with your point of view and vice versa and have these conversations, even if they are awkward and tough and things like that, without him being triggered or defensive or weaponized these things. Because that that's ultimately is going to determine whether it's even worth your time to like continue to build a future with this guy. Because like his his fears might be valid. Like, I don't know. It's just like, what happens? Mm-hmm. We, we do have these fights. And then you can say something like, listen, I don't care what you're going to, we're always going to have some fights. You know, that's, that's a, I can guarantee you that, you know, I'm going to piss you off. I, I'm, I have these things that you know I do that piss you off. Can we constantly work through them? Can we commit to each other that no matter what happens, we're going to take a breath, maybe like take a few moments and come back and try to work through a problem, always with the goal of like not winning, but like figuring it out. It's just, it's being clear with your intentions. When, when you go into these conversations, just, I, I would even write it, write them out. I know it sounds kind of like cheesy, but I've always found that to be really beneficial. What are my intentions here and, and how best to achieve that? And how, how can I m- make those intentions known in the clearest way? Be, speak in a different way. Sometimes you have to really like speak in very parsed, you know, uh, deliberate, uh, language and, and calmly. And I think you'll get, a, I think you'll get really far. Yeah, you're you're gonna be yeah. fine either yeah. way. I'm not. It's just it's just. I know the, the feeling. Six you don't years give up on. part. You're you're. You. I think part of you should make your decision, like you've been dating him for a year. Because ultimately, it really doesn't matter that you guys were together at twenty. Like the foundation. Yeah. Like what you when you were dating at twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven. What does that really mean now for you guys? That's just, you know, yeah, that's just adds to the story. It added, yes, it's just more pressure. It's just like yeah. oh, it feels like you gave up on. It doesn't really matter, guys. You could have met while you were twenty seven, but dating your boyfriend. I know that fear. The fear is like this will all have been for naught. Yes. six years of my life, and he's probably thinking a similar thing. Six years, but I, but it will. It will like benefit you greatly. You'll have learned so much you'll probably still be in each other's lives you'll be maybe closer in the long run it will i promise you it's not going to just be wasted time it will you will apply it to something else and you already are you're already using it to discover what you want and how 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 to achieve that happiness that that you you want and that has you know talking about it with a friend and and the fear of like if this ends i'm starting from square one and my friend like yeah exactly like that you're not you you've grown yes. you know what you want yes the yeah. next yes that you know exactly what now you're clear about what you want what you know you you are it's going to be easier for you now to like you know meet that next one i'm sure it's going to happen quickly but yeah. like i think that's some of the most damaging like thought process and advice of thinking you're starting over yeah. after a breakup because you're yeah. yeah you're just think of how much you know about yourself most importantly and life than you did at 25 yeah Right. And how much of what you learned about like what you want in a relationship versus not a relationship. Like you, if it doesn't work out and you start dating, so much of this relationship will play a role in a good way of helping you select someone who might be better suited for you. Mm -hmm. So to suggest that it was all for nothing is insane. Yeah. It's, it gives you clarity. It's the best thing. I spent a long time in relationships that weren't right many years and and i i thought the same way you know oh yeah it's a I very thought, relatable feeling oh man and like you think well that's it i said i waste all that i but spent seven my first yeah yeah no. yeah you'll be you'll be i promise you i know so when easier you're, for us yeah, to say when you're really confused ask yourself what i think this if, if we were just dating for six months or a year 
in terms of about losing what you built with him. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'll, I mean, that's, that's helpful. Well, good luck. All right. Well, yeah, start with the, start with the conversation Justin suggested. I think that it'll be very eye opening in terms of like what your appropriate next steps should be. And yeah. uh, hoping for the best for your mom too. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm excited to be closer to family. You so. should be. That's not, yeah. Yeah. Life is, uh, life is short. All right. Well, yeah. best of luck. Hold on to it. Thank and, you guys. And uh, let us keep, right. give us an update. Uh, yeah. When there is yeah, one. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Best of luck. All right. Take care. Well, Justin, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. I love this so much. People it's, love having you on. You're very good at it. I, you're, I enjoy it. Thank you, Amanda. I was telling my audience, if anyone like, it was like, hey, you know what? You're, you're bedridden. You can't come in. And I would be like, you know what? I, could t- I would let Justin take over Aww. by himself. <laughs> oh. I, only because like, I feel like with my audience, like we love having guests on sometimes, but they get very protective. They're like, you know, I've built a, like a trust with yeah, my audience, yeah. but you've, you've built Am a trust with my them? audience too. Oh, I feel wow. like. well, a I, significant yeah. amount of goodwill. Well, yeah. then thank you to your audience. So Ooh, where are they? There they are. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, I pl- love this stuff. Please let uh, my audience know uh, about your podcast, about yes. where they could follow you, all the, you know, your movie, uh, all the things. Just you, remind Nick. them of all that stuff. I will. I just got my podcast is Life is Short. And um, you can find it on, on it would do it through Wonder. You can find it on t- all the platforms, Spotify. You can Apple. go listen to it right now. Yes. You, yeah. Well, as soon as you're done. Just go search Life is Short. Add it to the queue. Yeah. yeah. I should have said that. Oh, you guys are better at plugs. Um, yeah. Add it to your queue. And what else? Uh, you know, stuff coming out uh, soon. I'm trying to think. <laughs> what? Um, your movie? A movie. Uh, House of Darkness. Uh, the Neil LeBute movie. Um, my movie's on, on yeah, streaming. If you add that to your queue, it's called Lady of the Manor. And I did it with my brother. And we're, we're really, uh, it's a fun ghost comedy with Melanie Linsky, who just won a Critics' Choice Award, my, my dear pal. Uh, she's fucking. She's fucking. Fuck, fuck, yeah. She's fucking great. Yeah. It's hard to talk about her performance without swearing because she's fucking great. Um, so check out all of Melanie Linsky's work. That's what I'm plugging. Well, yes, yes. <laughs> Justin can't thank you enough. Thank Thanks, you Nick. for listening, Thanks, guys. guys. Sending your Thanks, questions Shepard. at asknickacastme.com. Cast with a gay K. Go uh, uh, check out Justin's stuff. Uh, you can pre-order my book if you want. It's link in the show description. Why are you so coy about that? You'd be proud of it. Because I've been like, uh, I'm going to be asking him like oh, every really? Monday for oh, the <laughs> <laughs> Free advertising. It's like... Pre-order the book. Get ready for a lot of plugs. Yeah, get ready. You know, maybe if there's a there's a thing where you can just do it at the very end. So if they've already pre-ordered the book, they can turn off the show. You can do like two endings. Like yeah, anyway, like if things. If you pre-ordered the book, you are dismissed. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you have not exactly. pre-ordered the book. Yeah. What the You'll fuck? You'll have to listen to another plug. <laughs> <You're now> t- <laughs> well, I, my understanding is the the amount of books that they have made is oh. half of my Ask Nick audience. Oh. Just my Ask Nick audience. Oh. <laughs> so oh, really? Oh, really? don't be left out. Okay. People. I, no. Yeah. And there's many books to be pre sold. Anyway, uh, we will uh, see you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Not me, but I'll see you. Okay. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Tuesday Bachelor Recaps and Wednesday Celebrity and Expert Interviews. See you next time.